everyone, Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, August 4th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere. BYD, the world's second largest EV producer, has reported July 2024 EV sales. Figures are down about 4% compared to July of 2023, which is roughly in line with what Tesla has reported. BYD also produces hybrids, which have seen a significant uptick in sales year over year. The automaker had a record month with gasoline-powered vehicles factored in. Overall, BYD sells in 70 countries, and last year it sold over 3 million vehicles, including plug-in hybrids and battery electric models. Chinese automakers will have even more room to grow as they gain additional access to the North American market, which is the second largest on Earth behind China. Vehicles produced by BYD and Chinese competitors are already available in Mexico and the Caribbean. According to documents filed with the Canadian province of Ontario, BYD is now inquiring about establishing new business in Canada and seeking clarity related to EV tariffs there. On top of that, BYD and Uber just announced a partnership to deploy 100,000 new EVs on the platform in Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. They plan to offer discounts on charging, maintenance, insurance, financing, and leasing for Uber drivers. Eventually, Uber plans to utilize autonomous BYD EVs. The U.S. government is currently deterring most Chinese EV makers from selling here. That won't stop them from proliferating across the globe, realizing the cost benefits of that scale, and creating even higher levels of value for consumers. Audi has debuted the full specifications and details of their new mid-size all-electric sedan, the A6 e-tron. The A6 e-tron is on the PPE platform, along with the Q6 e-tron and the Porsche Macan EV. The platform's 800-volt architecture allows the battery pack to be divided into two modules for optimum charging at today's 400-volt charging stations and supports plug-and-charge capability. The A6 e-tron will be offered in a rear-wheel drive, Quattro, and S6 configurations. The rear-wheel drive will output 362 horsepower and accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.2 seconds. The top S6 trim will offer up to 543 horsepower in a 3.7 second 0 to 60 mile per hour time with launch control. DC fast charging speeds peak at 270 kilowatts, charging from 10 to 80 percent in 21 minutes. The AC charging rates will be 9.6 kilowatts for the U.S. market. Audi says the regenerative braking system can recuperate up to 220 kilowatts and is adjustable through the vehicle's paddle shifters. It will include a B mode for a one-pedal driving feel. The vehicle will launch with a 100 kilowatt-hour battery pack with an available 83 kilowatt-hour entry-level version at a later date. Audi says new battery cell chemistry has enabled about 30% higher energy density compared to the previous e-tron. The A6 e-tron will run on the Android Automotive Operating System with over-the-air updates and support for apps like YouTube and Spotify. The system also includes a self-learning voice assistant with ChatGPT integration coming later. Notable available features include an adaptive air suspension, an OLED curved panoramic display including three screens, one being a passenger touchscreen for entertainment, augmented reality head-up display, four-zone air conditioning with air quality package and fragrance distribution, smart glass panoramic roof with adjustable opacity, and a 20-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. Audi said the U.S. market will receive sport back body styles. There has been no word on the Avant wagon body style. Availability, pricing, and range has not yet been revealed for the U.S. market. Orders are scheduled to open up next month in Europe. The mid-size luxury sedan market is getting rather competitive with the BMW i5, Mercedes EQE, Tesla Model 3, and now the Audi A6 e-tron. Which one would you choose? According to the publication Nikkei Asia, Mitsubishi will join Nissan and Honda's alliance that we covered in our second episode of The Current last March. The partnership allows the Japanese automakers to share EV components and the standardization of in-vehicle software platforms. Other Honda partnerships include General Motors and Sony for EV production. Mitsubishi already has an existing relationship with Honda in Japan as well as their joint venture called Altna, which was established last month to create new businesses in battery leasing, battery repurposing, and smart charging. 
Mitsubishi's latest electrification goals include four new all-electric models and a mix of hybrids to make up its sales by 2035. Nissan owns 34% of Mitsubishi. The pair also has a long-standing alliance with French automotive group Renault. Japanese automakers are clearly divided into two groups. Do you see a clear winner emerging in the EV space? A few notable pre-production and prototype electric vehicles made the news this week. Lucid Motors rolled their first gravity SUV off the line. The model is expected to start deliveries before the end of this year. And Tesla showed off their first Cybertruck featuring a battery pack made with their in-house dry cathode 4680 battery cells. The dry cathode process was developed by Maxwell, which Tesla acquired back in 2019. According to Tesla, this methodology holds the promise of greater production sustainability, a smaller manufacturing footprint, and cost reductions of up to 50%. Tesla leadership has stated that they intend to incorporate their cells into consumer vehicles this year at a lower cost offered by their 4680 cell suppliers, including Japan's Panasonic and South Korea's LG Energy Solutions. The U.S. Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory has marked a new record for charging an EV with a polyphase wireless charging system at a peak rate of 270 kilowatts, using a system they've fitted to a first-generation Porsche Taycan in partnership with Volkswagen. Today's commercially available wireless charging systems for passenger vehicles tops out around 20 kilowatts. ORNL says the system can deliver a 50% increase in state of charge within 10 minutes with at least 95% efficiency. The receiver coil designed for the Porsche Taycan research vehicle can achieve 8 to 10 times higher power density compared to existing systems, said ORNL's Omar Onar, leader of the Vehicle Power Electronics Group and lead researcher on the Porsche demonstration. Per kilowatt weight, this is also the most lightweight charging system in the world. The lab team says the system uses lightweight polyphase electromagnetic coupling coils with a diameter just over 19 inches that allow for high power density in the smallest coil possible. The gap between the transmitter and the Taycan's integrated receiver on the ground was 4.75 inches. The team at Oak Ridge also said they are working with Volkswagen Group of America to develop a residential version of the polyphase wireless charging system for future production vehicles. Wireless charging can increase convenience for EV drivers and those with disabilities and will be useful for fleets and autonomous vehicle applications. EV makers like Tesla and Hyundai Group have openly invested in this technology, but we have not seen embedded support here in the U.S. on EVs yet. A couple of years ago, I published a demonstration of this technology at the Detroit Smart Parking Lab. I'll link that in the description below. What interests you most about wireless EV charging? Speaking of charging, this past week, the U.S. Joint Office of Energy and Transportation has released their public EV charging infrastructure playbook. This guidebook includes modules with guiding questions, videos, worksheets, and additional resources for deploying public EV chargers. I'll link it in the description below if you or someone you know is interested in learning more. If you have found value in this series, we would greatly appreciate it if you considered sharing this video and subscribing to this channel. We will continue producing this series as long as viewership continues to grow. Thank you so much for watching this latest episode of The Current. Until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.